will you please welcome our next author, Josh Gondelman. Yeah! Hello again, Joe Cruz 2023. Before I start reading, I have a message to relay from friend of the cruise, Jean Gray. Jean says, tell everyone I miss them and that they still shouldn't draw sunglasses on the side. I don't know if that's as binding as the googly eyes thing, but I was asked to relay the message and you all seem to know what it means. Okay, so a little caveat uh, again before I get into the thing. Uh, I wrote this I wrote this that I'm going to read yesterday, and I had a different idea last night that I was going to write today, but then I spent the afternoon uh, guessing whether I was seasick or hungover, and I was both. So yeah, so... Which, Oh, drunk or boat, drunk or boat, sure, yeah. Bingo! Bingo, yep. Okay, look, I'm going to say most of the words <laughs> for this next part <laughs> because I'm easily distracted. So, what you won't be hearing from me is the first page of my gritty reboot of the Red Wall series in the style of Deadpool, which was either going to be called Red Pool or Dead Wall, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a jump on when Brian and Jock enters the public domain, but it was not to be. Okay, so here's the real thing. So, Taffy brought us her actor's book, Fleischman is in Trouble. Uh, it was a huge bestseller, great book, adapted for FX, and it's nominated for all sorts of awards. Right? You all have heard of it, yes. And the, the series stars Claire Danes and Lizzie Kaplan, who are wonderful, and of course, Jesse Eisenberg, who's most relevant to this discussion, uh, because I think we can all agree he is kind of a Josh Gondelman type, I would say. <laughs> the character is a neurotic Jew living in New York, worried about aging and masculinity, and it's like, hello, I'm right here. Uh, I think this could have really been a huge break for me as an actor. Nothing against Jesse Eisenberg, one of my favorite performers on screen, but I'm ready for my star turn. So I started writing my own book that's going to be adapted in the vein of Fleischman, but in my book, the main character is so precisely based on me that uh, the novel is going to be beloved. That's the first thing. And then, if they tried to cast anyone who isn't me, the fans would revolt. Um, so this is the first page. Without further ado, I bring to you page one of my upcoming novel, Gondelman is in Peril. <laughs> George Gondelman. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So there's a little blurriness. Uh, put his head down on his desk. He had just canceled a work meeting, citing a feeling of vertigo stemming from his acute and ever-present awareness of the Holocaust. <laughs> but in reality, he was probably just hungry. <laughs> the cool oak felt soothing against Gondelman's abundant forehead. <laughs> he tried not to think of himself as having a terrible head of hair, but rather a dazzling head of head. <laughs> A, a largely unadorned carrying case for his clever but otherwise not especially powerful brain. A brain that spent an inordinate portion of its energy upset that even pretty nice hotels seldom splurge for upmarket toilet paper. A brain that often declined invitations to friends' weddings for unclear reasons, but would rarely turn down the opportunity to accept sushi of dubious provenance. <laughs> including sometimes on a boat. <laughs> As Gondolin sat up, his soft midsection butted up against the desk. For no particular reason, he thought to himself that if someone were to make a movie or TV series about his life, it would be important that no one too conventionally sexy be cast to portray him. <laughs> no one with six-pack abs or an impressive beard or even especially good posture, he thought. <laughs> Honestly, he considered idly, it would be a mistake to cast someone who is too seasoned or talented as a performer in the role. It would take away from the relatable everyman quality he's convinced he has, despite being a weird little Jew whose thin, reedy voice leaves new acquaintances mystified about his sexuality. <laughs> yes, a kind of sloppy, effortful performer would be best to capture Gondelman's essence. He himself was, as his late step-grandmother once told him, more of a writer than an actor anyway. It was a well-intentioned comment, and yet, 20 years later, he couldn't help thinking about it, and even recounting it for strangers. It was, humiliatingly, his primary memory of this lovely woman who had otherwise shown him nothing but kindness. It was thoughts like these that would make Gondelman such a flawed but compelling protagonist. <laughs> 
Conlon and Blank shook his head. How much time has he wasted on these humiliating ambitions? Why would anyone make a movie or TV series about his life? Unless. <laughs> Two things were clear to him, though. One, he had gotten himself into the kind of sexy, neurotic entanglement that people win Emmys for portraying on screen. <laughs> and two, in the unlikely event that it came up, he would show his bare ass on premium cable or a top tier streaming service. <laughs> Thank you. Page two. <laughs> <laughs> Those are those are not the 